chessboard with no shaded squares, a playing field with no out of bounds, just endless rippling plain with no discernible features. How do you win out here? Yes, I said win because this is a contest. They're called game fish after all. Sure, the modern captain has his numbers, charts, radar, but the best players in the game have something more, and that's time spent on trial and error. And when you match that experience with a few perfect spring days in the Florida Keys, you get this. and present and defines the destiny of all life on earth. It surrounds land from every angle and it takes and gives as it pleases. Throughout the ages, humanity has used the sea for sport and sustenance. It's a deep, dark frontier and there are untold fathoms left to explore. Beware the tides of March. Wind kicks up, fronts roll in. Long-term weather forecasts shapeshift with each passing hour, just the way Captain John Henry likes it. The spring is my favorite. Things are moving around. You're always got something to chase, not so much in the winter where it's like a grind. You're limited to a certain amount of things and you gotta just get the right days for certain fish, but the spring seems like it's just wide open for everything. Not a lot of captains and anglers in the Northeast say that spring is their favorite fishing season. It's a much easier position to take when your home base is Marathon, the 10 mile long community in the middle of the Florida Keys. Its 13 islands provide anglers equal access to the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. Offshore, inshore, reef, wreck, backcountry, Pick your pursuit. On any given day in the spring, you can go out there and catch a handful of permits on the morning and catch a few sails if you wanted to on the way out. The bottom fishing is usually really good. There's one. I knew that they were there and sometimes you gotta just put your time in and drift around and just cause a commotion to get them to come up. Sometimes it's just throwing a jig or someone hooking a blue runner or a jack and getting them to come up. Yeah, cobia, cobia, cobia. A lot of times we hook those fish, like we had a smaller fish on and there was a real nice fish with them. If you're ready and you hook a nice small cobia and you know it's him, you got another rod ready. They generally bring up a good school of fish with them or another big one. So anytime you target cobia and catch them, it's always a good time. Marathon's mile markers run from 47 to 60. But beyond the confines of land, there are two seas with untold fathoms left to explore.
Captain John Henry and crew depart Marathon and head out the Gulf side, en route to a natural spring about 40 miles offshore. The spring's warm 72 degree water attracts bait and the predators that follow. The beauty of the coast here is you can either go on the Atlantic and play or the Gulf based on the wind. Typically, the further back you go in the Gulf, you're tucked away from the coast, so it kind of blocks the wind. That allows the opportunity to have a nice ride and go far and not worry about the seas so much. And I kind of plan it to where you go after a big blow where there's not going to be people out there, you know, and then when it gets calm, the fish will kind of have it to themselves. You get to pick a calm day and run back there. It usually pays off if you time it right. Upon arrival, the glassy gulf reveals an incredible sight, jackpot. been back there in probably two years, so I wasn't sure what we were going to get into. But I knew it was a natural spring hole, and typically if you get back there and it's calm and there's not too many boats, you get a chance at some cobias. There's some of the big schools of jacks, and the life back there is incredible. Big wad of bait up top different kinds, nice to have different varieties of bait. Sometimes the fish will react differently to different baits and react better to some than others. So we try to capitalize on that as much as we can. Not a lot of days you get nice days out here where you can catch bait, you know, and have a nice day to see them up on top like this. So just because you see them too doesn't mean they bite either. their tails out. Oh. <laughs> Big girls. Good old Jack Cravel. Poor man's permit. There aren't a lot of Jack Cravels mounted on walls, and you won't find them on the specials menu. Maybe that's why Jacks don't get the cred they deserve. The nickname Canal Tuna isn't nearly as cool as Silver King or Grey Ghost, but they're fierce fighters, tackle wreckers, and explosive eaters. It's a relative of the giant Trevally, and both turn their flat bodies for leverage when hooked. are attracted to the natural spring as well. They move up and down the water column so they can be caught by sight fishing or trolling. Cobias will tend to hang around the giant school of jacks, get around the schools of other fish and kind of try to blend in. Here, let me go lower down there for you. Maybe open that door for him so he ain't got much to pull over, because he's going to go nuts. In the boat, in the boat. Yeah! <laughs> nice job. Legal one, the elusive cobia. We had a couple shots at some other ones. They were not quite big enough, but this one here, as you can see, is plenty big enough. Stick around, friends. You'll want to see this. The kites go up, and so do the sails.
Sailfish are beloved by anglers and TV shows alike for many reasons. The big one is that they are incredibly visual. Got him? Yeah. The eats, the leaps, a dorsal fin worthy of a Vegas showgirl. And fishing for them with kites turbocharges the experience. That's the best presentation, the kite. I like the whole putting the kite out, being visual, being able to maneuver the bait. I like the technicality of it, how much different opportunity it can create. Three fish rise up on it. You still got three other baits out there. You're fishing effectively. It brings so much different dynamic to fishing. Threadfin herring are the primary bait, but they aren't the hardiest fish. Better work quickly. When a sail rises on a kite bait, the bait is reeled to the surface so the leader is out of the water. That reduces the chance of the fish's bill getting wrapped. The line is then snapped out of the release clip with the rod tip pointed toward the sail as you take back line and come tight. You got him, Sil? Paid off. We suck it out and got a bite. Here, just keep this tight for him, and if we get it close, you can cut it. He wasn't sure if Blake was going to get him on the first one. He said, let me help Blake out. Just hold it. We'll try to grab him. I got to try to get him on that swim platform. Back up now. Try not to turn him, Blake. All right. We're learning more about post-release mortality for billfish. Full-grown sail. The simple guidance is keep them in the water. There she goes. As little as a minute out of the water can have deadly consequences. Pretty work, dog. We tried hard and we got a bite. He ate one bait and ran and ate another one so fast we thought it was two, but whatever. Get him on two lines is better than one. We got the release and see if we can get a couple more. like bottom fishing, some guys like jigging. I enjoy it all. I like kite fishing. I like sight fishing. Anything I can watch eat, I want it. I want that. Hold the hook right there. Right. That's actually a sick release video. Yeah, it's good release. Got the hook back. That's sick, sick right? Fish swam off nice and safe. Well, two for two. Got lucky, man. Sometimes it just helps to be lucky. And for our final act, from the top to the bottom.
It's a special occasion when you can fish for sails on the surface and then target the bottom fish below using the same bait, threadfin herring with a few pilchards mixed in. If you ask me any given day of the week what I want to go catch, it's probably going to be something that lives on the bottom. We're just going to get up tied of this wreck. These muttons, they're like a cow grazing in the pasture. There's a main superstructure, and they'll just kind of sit outside of it and graze in the grass, make their round, and kind of pick crabs and stuff outside of it. We're just trying to drift through the area, and we'll get a kind of a, an idea, hopefully time it right to when they're passing through, and we'll mark them. And we'll put a nice bait on the bottom, really long leader, kind of get it up away from the lead, and not have so much effect when we're bouncing around. Main factor today, a lot of times, is the sharks. Like I said, the tax man's out there waiting. He's hoping you miss a beat on the handle so he can eat them. The snapper has one of the biggest family trees in the ocean. There are more than 50 species of snapper from the American brown to the yellowtail. The mutton is the most popular among them in South Florida and the Florida Keys. Most snappers run just a few pounds. Mutton run from five to 15 pounds. A small mutton snapper is a big win, but a big mutton deserves slow motion. One of my favorite fish to catch in the whole world right there. The old beautiful pink ghost, also known as a mutton. What's wrong with that one? Bottom fishing, I'm picturing in my head what's eating. I'm thinking, oh, this is a 20 pound mutton eating my bait. It's just the thrill of that for me. Jumbaroni. Another beautiful mutton from the deep. Took a couple tries, but we finally landed on a big slob like this one. This one probably be about 15 pounds. So that's it, game over. We finished the marathon. We're gonna savor this win because there are losses to come. Exploring is trial and error, but X can't mark the spot without it.